Hello and welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. Today we're going to make a 64 game ROM pack or game cartridge and uh, this is going to have a flash chip in it that holds 64 banks of, of different ROM images and there's a 6 dip switch on the edge of the cartridge to select the ROM. So let's go ahead and get started building this. So we're starting with a ROM pack that I won in an eBay auction a few years ago. It came in with no label and it turned out it was Galactic Attack. But uh, this is the donor cartridge. It's just a regular old Radio Shack cartridge from the 80s, nothing special. And since it was missing the label, it's perfect for repurposing for the 64 game ROM. I normally wouldn't wouldn't harm a uh, ROM pack but this one came in an eBay auction and it was missing the label and so I don't feel so bad about taking this one apart and modifying it so the way to open the ROM pack after you get the screw out is just to depress on the sides here and here on either side of of the little of the cartridge cover so there and there, and then it falls right open. Okay. I'm using 30 gauge wire wrap and I'm making a little hook in the end of the wire so that I get a lot of contact on the leads and it's a stronger solder joint and it also makes it a little bit easier to hold on while you're making the solder connection. And a little bit of the technique for stripping the wire ends 
if you don't have a 30 gauge wire stripper, I, which I don't, so if you're just very gentle, there it goes. And I was careful not to cut into the wire itself. Just r gently roll it like that. Make another hook in that end. And the, the little hook will just make it easier to hold on to, to the pin Okay, so I hook the wire around the pin and just squeeze it to crimp it around there to hold temporarily. Now it's going to hold itself. The wire is holding itself in place while I just lightly touch it with solder. These pins are so soft when when you heat the pen it can melt the plastic carrier so just give it very brief heat no pressure with the solder tip and um, and just light just lightly heat that just until you see the solder melt and then it's a good connection we have one two three wires that are going to make connections here here and here we have a wire that's going to be connected to ground that's there and I'm just going to pick up ground right here on the board so I'm going to go ahead and make these connections now just want to go heat that pin these pins these right angle pins are a little heavier I melted the plastic there the right angle pins are a little heavier and take a little more uh, longer contact with the soldering tip to get them hot enough. I want to shift this over and I'm going to make this brown wire connection. So really the, the first two are probably the hardest connections. Okay there's the corner on that side. Good. Okay, so there, there's a corner pin here holding and a corner pin there. Now these remaining connections are very easy to make, so I'll make those last. And I'm just, I'm just going to um, lay these wires down out of the way. Okay, this is the hard one. Let's just get it out of the way. Okay, that wasn't too bad. A couple of tighter ones over here. Let's get those next. Or if you're feeling shaky, come back to those in a moment. And 11. And I think that soldering is finished. And now I just have to make the eight connections to the dip switch and the pull-up resistors. I have the dip switch mounted on a small piece of PCB. I believe I'll position the dip switches on the edge of the ROM pack, right about there. The dip switches are now epoxied into the case. I used the Dremel or a knife to rough up the, the black plastic piece before I applied the epoxy. Now let's do a test fit. Okay, it's a good fit. So dip switches are ready. Now we can make the connections to the dip switch. Okay, next I stripped back about an inch of insulation on the ground wire and I grounded one side of each of the six dip switches. I have about a 9 or 10k ohm resistor for each of the six dip switches and uh, so to the other side of the dip switch opposite of ground I'm going to make a pull-up resistor to VCC. Now I have the six address connections to make to each of the six switches and looks like my notes were brown, black, green, blue, orange, violet.
So brown. I'm just going to carefully move those, tuck them in here. And we always want to do some ohm checking before we apply power to anything. So now I'm going to I'm going to check all the connections from the edge pins to the pins on the chip. Well, I've ohm checked all the connections or most of them and visually checked the rest. So it's time to close this ROM pack and test it in the cocoa. I programmed the flash with a few images in, in the first four banks just to get started. Okay, we've, we've just made those last address wire connections to the dip switches. The dip switches all need to be turned on for bank zero. Okay, with, with the dip switches all on the left or on the top, image zero is disk extended color basic. And bank one, two, and three will be the different versions of drive wire for the Coco one, two, and three. Okay. All right, disk extended color basic. Okay, now let's change to bank two, which would be the Coco two version of DriveWire three. So I'm going to toggle the second dip switch up. That's bank two. All right, HDB DOS. DriveWire 3, Coco 2. Okay, so it looks like these first four images are probably going to work. And now I can go take the cartridge and remove the flash and program it with a whole bunch more ROMs. I'm using this TL866 to program my EEPROMs. And I've copied all of my ROM cartridges and some utilities onto the 64 ROM pack. And one thing to note is depending on which cartridge you actually use as the donor cartridge, you might not have enough address pins available on the card edge connector for the larger ROMs. So for example, some of the games like Demon Attack or Tetris or Arkanoid, all these games here are larger than 8K. So I chose not to put any of these on, on this double EEPROM. So, so this is broken up into 8K ROM images. So any game that's 2, 4, or 8K is going on here. And I'm going to make another uh, ROM cartridge for the larger games. And that way I can get 64 of the 8K images on this. And then I could get I could fit 32 of the 16K images on, let's say, a second cartridge, and I could even uh, mix and match 16 and 32. I could probably just make, uh, you know, one more uh, ROM pack that has maybe eight images of up to 32K each. So just keep that in mind that to get the, the most efficient utilization, you probably want you know, a large number of the smaller ROM images or a smaller number of the larger ROMs. Let's go with Color Baseball. It's an, a two in the lower three switches. So there, that would be Color Baseball. Awesome. 
Okay, and let's say I wanted to play spider side. So a three on the next two switches, and then it's in the zero position, so I don't have to change any of the lower three switches. So this should be spider side. Okay, let's try Polaris. And that's a five. Okay, I think I have it there. Oh no, is my fire button broken? Let's try skiing. Okay, that should be skiing. So that's the 64 ROM pack. It's full of games and utilities and it's made a very useful little cartridge out of this old cartridge with that was dirty and no label and not of much use to anyone before. Now it's, it's really handy. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that and let me know if you have any feedback on the video and until next time, see you then.